Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Survival Org Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Connors. My wonderful co-host, Dennis Patrick, is missing still. I'm not 100% sure what happened to him, but anyways, we have people on the lookout. But nevertheless, we have with us, from Survivor, fans versus favorites, the wonderful Joel Anderson. Joel, say hello to everybody. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. So first things first, how did you first get on Survivor? Ooh. Man, that's going back a ways now. Uh, 2007, there was a, an open casting here in in Arizona, just outside of Fountain Hills, at uh, one of the casinos, and uh, I was getting emails and suggestions from a lot of people that I knew that I needed to go down there and uh, and and do the tryout or do the audition or whatever it was. We weren't really 100% sure what the process was, so I went down one day and uh, stood in line with about 1,500, maybe 2,000 other people, and waited in that process and turned in my application and spoke to a camera for two minutes while I stood on the line and held a sheet of paper that had my name on it <laughs> and went home and told my wife, uh, no, no worries, I don't think anybody's going to be calling and, uh, and, and didn't, uh, didn't really think about it too much again because I had no idea what to expect and there were people there in costumes, there were people there with scripts, there were people there all around me talking about how they had just come from the audition in L.A. and you know this was there and now they were doing this one and they've been trying out for the last seven years and just I thought man there is no way <laughs> out of all these people that I have done one single thing that would be memorable. So <laughs> well, I just went home and didn't even think about it again until. Uh, I was, oddly enough, I was sitting in the hospital room with my wife. We were getting ready to have a baby, and, and the phone rang, and they said, hey, we'd like you to come to L.A. and, oh, uh, and continue on in the process. So um, were that's, you able that's, to, my, that's my short story. <laughs> were you able to work around uh, your wife's baby getting to L.A.? Or did you have to, like, tell the L.A. people to hold on for a bit, or how did that work? No, it was, it was they were absolutely um, completely cool with, with everything. In fact, I, I believe it was Lynn that I was speaking with, and she said, hey, you know what, you, you handle your business, and you give us a call when when you're done. If it's a day, if it's two days, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you give us a call when you're done, and uh, and we'll set everything up and give you all the details. So, you know, I was a little bit more anxious than that, mm -hmm. so I, I called the next day and got everything squared away and figured out when uh, when I could get out there and they, uh, you know, what what day within that week of interviews they were doing, I could get out there. So we set it all up, and and I flew out. They were incredibly accommodating, and uh, and my wife was also. So yeah, everything everything went really really smoothly. Um, so, oh. Like I said, I had no idea what to expect, and it was just it was just a very smooth process. Mm -hmm. So, well, how long were you a fan of the show before you applied for it and before you got on? Well, contrary to what some of the critics would say, um, I watched season one. I, I was a fan since the beginning of the series. My my wife and I, when we were dating, would watch um, season one, mm -hmm. and then call each other and talk to each other. We actually we actually worked together, and so we would that would be what our conversation would be about the entire next day at work. <laughs> was, uh, the stupid moves or the good moves or what I would have done and how I could have done it better and and uh, everything on in in the uh, that we were watching that season and then obviously you know I watched each season throughout the uh, the rest of it until 2007 when mm -hmm. when I was or 2008 when I was <laughs> off but you know filmed in 2007. Yeah. So Survivor kind of helped you with your love life a little bit. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, sure, you could say that. Hey, uh, um, I I would. Uh, you know, we we would be on the phone sometimes. I'd be at my house, and my wife would be at hers, and we'd be on the phone sometimes talking about, you know, can you can you believe what just happened? I can't believe you did that. And, you know, obviously my favorite, not obviously, but my favorite that first season was Rudy. He was just, you know, he was just a tough as nails old crotchety guy that that didn't care too much about what he said and had no real filter. And I thought, you know, that's a guy I can relate to, mm -hmm. and uh, and we would we would talk about that and. Um, you know, I get feedback. My wife was 20 years old at the time, so she was living with her parents, and I 
hear what her mom had to say about it in the background. Of course, <laughs> auditions came around. Her mom was one of the first people to say, you you need to do this. You, you need to get on this show. You can win this. Awesome. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit. You step sure. out on the beach, and then Jeff Probst says, here's who you're playing against. What was your reaction to that? I was, I, honestly, I was a little disappointed. Um, I felt like if we were playing – or if I was playing, or if the tribe, you know, in hindsight, if the tribe that we had was playing against other players on an even playing field, it would have been a totally different game. Mm -hmm. um, so when I saw previous players coming around the corner, I was I was not pleased. I think, you know, you watch that clip, and you can see all, well, most of, maybe one or two, I think me and Mikey D were actually the only two people that, that weren't cheering or clapping <laughs> or all excited. I think he and I... As, as little as either of us would probably want to admit it on the island are, are similar, similar types of guys. And he and I, I think we're thinking the same thing, like this is just horse manure. Yeah. You know, well, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't excited. The only thing that got me excited about that process was when James came out because watching that, that season of China prior to, to us going out there, um, I, I wanted to, I wanted to go against him. I wanted to see, you know, what what I could do against James. So well, that's another, that was the only thing that got me excited. I have a, a similar question, a question kind of related relating to that. How much of China did you see before you got to play? About half, about half the season before we left, and uh, that was a little bit frustrating. So you know, yeah, seeing Amanda and seeing James was was a little bit surprising. You know, obviously we figured they, they must have done something right to, mm -hmm. to be back as, as favorites. But um, but we only saw about half the season. Um, I, I really liked the way Todd was playing that season. And um, so there were, you know, I got a, a little bit of insight into obviously Amanda and, and James. Um, so, yeah, but we left halfway through. So yeah, I had to come home. My wife recorded it all. We came home to finish one. <laughs> you watched it and you went, really? That James guy got voted out with two idols in his pocket? Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I'm way smarter than him. <laughs> well, I was, I hadn't, you know, obviously we hadn't seen, it was It was still going to be a few months before we saw our edit. Mm -hmm. But watching that made me feel a little bit better in in the sense of going, okay, well, that's how, okay, that, if that's what if that's what happened to him. And, you know, he kind of made a silly move, and I don't know, it just made me feel better about the process, obviously, at that time, knowing that I went home after five episodes. Um, I actually heard that the fans' camp was, like, really, really, really bad, and that the favorites' camp was awesome. Do you think the producers did that intentionally? I don't know. That, that's true, and I don't know if it was intentional or not. I have a hard time, you know, kind of, I would have a hard time thinking that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I know that the uh, the returning players thought it was absolutely hilarious, and when the tribe shuffled like they did uh, um, on like the fourteenth day, when the tribe shuffled, I know that the favorites, the returning players who went to our um, I Rise old camp, were were not pleased at all, and it didn't really give them a good impression of us. Mm -hmm. I, you know, me, I wasn't sleeping in a shelter at all anyways so the shelters where they were and uh, and how they were constructed and everything didn't mean anything to me I didn't I didn't sleep in a shelter but the uh, when they came over they were like are you kidding me you guys are stupid <laughs> <laughs> this is what your accommodations are and, and it, yeah they just I, mean, they didn't, I was I was on the other tribe I was at the nice tribe and and, and uh, the nice island, Derek and I were going, holy Toledo, this is a vacation over here. So. <laughs> Can you give me some insight into some of the early alliances that we as viewers didn't get to see? Absolutely, yeah. That was uh, day two, the morning. Well, it wasn't even really fully day two because we got there about halfway through the first day in the, in the afternoon or in the evening. We, mm -hmm. All I knew was the sun was getting ready to set. So that next morning... Um, before noon, before lunch, the uh, myself and Alexis and Natalie sat on our boat and decided that, you know, basically we we talked 
and all agreed, you know, hey, look, we're, we're fans. We've watched this show. We know how things go. The alliances, the people that make it to the end are the ones that, that form an early alliance and don't ever break it. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't uh, you know, tell everybody what their alliance is. They don't put it out there. They don't brag about it like, like some of the fans were this season. You know, you had, you had four people that were aligned, and they're basically flaunting it. Yeah. We're aligned. We're the, we're the good-looking people. Oh, you guys are going to go. You know, you know, like, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. You form your alliance, and then you ignore your alliance. That's yeah. what you do. Um, and and if, you can, if you can have a relationship like that with the people out there where there is actually some legitimate trust, then things can go really well. And so that's kind of the conversation. It was it was literally a couple hours of, of discussing everything and really getting to know each other. And uh and we all agreed, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is this is what we want to do. We want to go to the end, us three, we're gonna stick to it. It's it you know, whether we like each other or not, we even discuss that. You know, hey, if I piss you off, I'm gonna say I'm sorry now. Because it's gonna happen, but we have to stick to this alliance. Mm-hmm. And so we agreed on that, and no sooner did we agree that, and I, I still don't know if he was sleeping or listening in, but Eric popped his head up from inside that boat. We were sitting on the boat, and none of us had any idea he was there. <laughs> <laughs> the boat. No sooner did we agree, he popped his head up, and thank God I didn't say anything bad about him because I did speak poorly about a few people, mm-hmm. but not him. He popped his head up, and I say, oh, good, Eric. <laughs> you're, you're you're our fourth. <laughs> so, oh, wow. just, you know, we kind of looked at each other, Natalie and Alexis, and I kind of looked at each other like, "Oh crap, where did he come from?" <laughs> I can't so, believe they didn't show that. So I, you know, it they, I yeah, it was it was it was a really awkward kind of situation, <laughs> but we turned it into something positive because mm-hmm. Eric is really one of the most loyal guys I think that you'd, you'd ever meet. And it just, it was perfect that it was him and not somebody else laying in there. And and that made our four. Mm-hmm. Now, the criticism is you can't have, you know, you, you, your four is not a majority on ten, right? Yeah. And and that was what happened to the, to the four this season. Four is not a majority. But the dynamic on that day already, the dynamic of our tribe was cool kids versus nerds. And it just that's just that's what it was. Mikey V really said it best when he said those those people they're the nerds. Mm-hmm. And so the natural, you know, um, way things would kind of shuffle out or sift out in the process was six over here, seven over here. Um, I I say six, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But yeah, yeah. Six over here, and three over here. I saw myself as in the middle, mm-hmm. or on the side with with Mary and and uh, Tracy and Chet. And the reason I saw myself as as part of them is because I was the only other guy there that was married. I was the only other person there that had kids. Mm-hmm. And when it came down to it, uh, I'm going to be the – I'm not a young, single, good-looking person. You know, one of the, one of these one of these pretty people. I'm 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 an old guy. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. And they're going to group me in my in my mind. They're going to group me with Tracy, Mary, and Chad. Mm-hmm. So that being the dynamic, that was already in my mind, right? You know, right out of the gate. So it was perfect in my mind for us four if we stayed committed to each other me and Natalie and Alexis and Eric, that Tracy, Mary, or I'm not Mary, why do I keep saying that? Tracy, Kathy, and Chet absolutely hated my team, Mary and Jason. Yeah. And those three were never going to align with the other three. So oh, oh, I see. our four oh, was power. Middle. What's that? I was, oh, I, I, yeah, I was saying you four had all the power because you could dictate – Oh that's wow! Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I saw it. Was that we could pick one by one by one. We could pick off on both sides, playing both sides because not ever letting anybody know that Alexis and I had an alliance. Mm-hmm. Not ever letting anybody know that Natalie and Alexis and Eric and I were together. Never letting on. 
you know, never hanging out, never, other than that, that first day where we could easily say, well, hey, it's the first day, we're just getting to know each other. Yeah, yeah. After that, it was, no, Alexis, you hang out with Mikey. Um, Natalie, you, you do your, you do your solo thing, you know, you're flying under the, she, she did the loner kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, Eric, you're, you're buddy, buddy with Jason, you know, that's, that, that's kind of how things were going to play out. And, um, we never got to see any of that, but, in in my opinion, the reality was that that was a dumb deal. The four of us were going to ride that to the end, picking off each each person on each side, um, until I kind of you know I I kind of made a stupid mistake, and that's nobody's blame but me. So let's talk about why. So why was Mary the first target out of that whole group? Out of any of those people you could pick, why did you pick Mary? Sure, and, and very very valid question, mm -hmm. an often asked question. Um, it could have been, it, it could have been any of those six. In in my opinion, it could have been any of those six. What I saw happening was I saw Mary playing the flirt game with Mikey, mm -hmm. and I saw Mikey potentially getting getting swayed. Now they deny it. They they say that that was never an issue. Mm -hmm. And my only defense to that is to say, look at the votes. Because the votes wouldn't have gone the way they did if other people didn't see the same thing I saw. That's, that's one person true. can't vote out one person. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so I get blamed for being insecure and being jealous and, and everything else. And I all I can say to that is whatever. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I, I really don't think I was. I got a pretty beautiful wife sitting here. <laughs> I don't think that was an issue at all. Um, my issue was Mary basically plays the poverty game, mm -hmm. and that was what she was going to do. And it's a very, very powerful game, obviously, because we saw poverty win, right? Well, I completely so agree with thought, you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I completely agree with you on Mary playing that game. And here's something that you can tell people that say that was a bad move. H have you seen Redemption Island? Yes. Remember when Boss and Rob randomly voted out Matt because Andrew was getting too close? I saw what you did very similar to that. You were breaking Absolutely. up a potential pair. It wasn't Absolutely. a bad. I don't think it was a bad move at all. No, I think I think it was a smart move. And I said that night, I said, "Here's the deal. If Mikey is being legitimate with us, then he's not going to care about this move. Mm -hmm. You know, because Mikey was trying to say, hey, look, um, me." And and uh, we're going to do a guys alliance, which w which would have been a great alliance too. Yeah. But I just I don't believe that that was what his real agenda was. But Mikey was saying, hey, let's me and and Jason and Eric and and Joel, you know, let's uh, let's uh, let's the four of us be a guys alliance. And Mikey believed that he could manipulate Alexis. And Jason believed, or, or you know, Mikey wanted Jason or Eric to try and get close to Natalie. And that we would have the six, you know, the seven against the three. And once those three were gone, then we would start to get get rid of the women. Mm -hmm. And yeah, great on paper, except I just didn't believe that that was what his intention was, especially with the way I saw things kind of happening with uh, with him and Mary. He says it was him. Actually, he he liked Alexis more now in mm -hmm. interviews I've heard him give, which, which is fine. Either way, it's not a guy. <laughs> so. So that's fine if if you want to say it was Alexis and not Mary or whatever. Either way, it's not a guy. Now, mm -hmm. I believe that what I was seeing was legitimate because I wasn't the only one who voted for her, and I didn't strong arm or bully anybody into voting for her. And and you know, Alexis voted for her, and Natalie voted mm -hmm. for her, and Tracy and 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 Kathy voted for her. Kathy was the only one who I said vote Mary, you know. Yeah, but, but I feel yeah. like with her, that was almost the approach you had to do. And we, and of course we were well, talking about Kathy. Back, she had just come back from the, uh, the 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 island they send you to. I couldn't, you know, Exile from, Island. From, yeah, she had just come back from Exile Island, so there was no time. Mm -hmm. There was no time to explain. There was no, It wasn't me strong arming her. It was me saying, "This is what we're doing." Okay, grab your stuff because we're leaving. <laughs> and so that was it. Yeah, that was yeah. all. It wasn't, you know, they made it look like I was. Guess what? You do this because I say so, and mm -hmm. it, was like, it was like no. They're telling us to gather up our stuff and get going, and I'm telling you what the plan is before we leave. I'm keeping you in the loop. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, you know, everybody, Tracy, Chad, and 
and, and Kathy and Alexis and Natalie and me and Eric, we all voted for her, <laughs> if I remember correctly. We all voted for her. And uh, Mikey was surprised and, and pissed. And uh, what I was going to say earlier is my plan was if he doesn't care, if he's on the, you know, if he's full on this guy's alliance thing, then he's not going to care that she went home. Mm -hmm. But if she was part of his longer-term alliance, then he's going to be pissed. And if he's pissed, then you know what? He can go home next. And that, like I kind of alluded to earlier, that was my mistake. Yeah. My what mistake exactly do you think is your mistake next. out of that? What's that? Which one of those things is your mistake, not telling Mikey or voting out Mikey next? Voting out Mikey next was my mistake, uh, absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, he was – the plan was for him to go at some point anyways. Yeah. He wasn't part of our four. But – as soon, and this was me just being naive and out of my element, as soon as Tracy came to me, the decision to vote Mikey out wasn't because she changed my mind about anything. Mm -hmm. The decision to vote Mikey out was already made because of how upset he was about us, about us voting Mary out. But what I should have realized is that when Tracy came to me, and was really trying to get a foot in that door and really trying to work her agenda, what I should have realized is this chick's here to play. Mm -hmm. Well, that and was actually going to be my next question was... Which the bow to her. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say my next question was, how accurate was Tracy's manipulation of you and of the other people she tried to manipulate uh, later in the game? You know, I, I've said this a few times, and I'm not trying to be mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trying to be, but Tracy didn't really have anything to do with anything that was going on on the island, with the exception of she was definitely the leader of the Kathy and Chet and her group, that group of three. She was definitely the leader of that group of three. But any other decision that was made, I mean, she was voted out from right after me. Mm -hmm. uh, when after the shuffle, and uh, you know, Chet went home because he was injured. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I can't remember if that was part of a tribal council or not. But he, um, was injured, he had to go to the hospital, and they had to take a, a piece of coral out yeah. of his heel and everything. So that was a that was a done deal, anyways. But she was the next one voted out after me, so she wasn't. She didn't have anything to do with any decisions that were being made on on the new tribe after the shuffle. She didn't have anything to do with any decisions that were being yeah. made on our original IRI tribe, and the scene where it looks like she's manipulating me, I was just kind of humoring her with even acting like I was listening to it. Um, you see me, you saw me the night before do the same thing with Mikey when he was saying, oh, that was a dumb move, and I tried to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah you're right. <laughs> I did the same thing with him. You, you did didn't do a her. very convincing job doing that Mikey B spiel because well, you know. your face was priceless. It was like <laughs> it was pitch black. <laughs> yeah, it was pitch black out there, so I didn't, I didn't have to. You know, he couldn't see me. That was right after we got home, and and it was it, they had a light. They had that that night vision light on yeah. us. So yeah. he and I talking. He couldn't see anything I was doing, but I was trying to give a convincing. Oh yeah, geez, golly gosh, Mikey, you're right. You know and. And then I did the same thing with Tracy during her conversation. Yeah, you know what? You're right. He is. He is doing that. Gosh, you know, oh, man, yeah, you should. But that decision was already made. Like I said, my tunnel vision didn't allow me to see how much she was there to play. Uh -huh. So then, not again, not that it would have mattered, but what I should have done is vote her out next, and then, then we would have had two on each side, you yeah. know, and Mikey would have still thought he was calling the shots, which would have given him no indication that that I was running anything. And and I think things would have gone a lot smoother. It would have been a totally different game if we had done that. I think. I think it would have been a totally different game because now you'd have Mikey and Jason left on one side. You'd have Chet and and Kathy left on the other without their leader Tracy. Mm -hmm. They would have probably quit the next day. <laughs> And 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 then there we are. There's there again. We're right back to Alexis, Natalie, Eric, and me, and we got control. Mm -hmm. um, um, I want to so ask it, you. Uh... It, you know, obviously, I kicked myself um, for for playing, making some of the moves that I was even able to make in the very very short time that I was there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that was probably my biggest mistake was not switching to Tracy. The, that moment, and and uh, it, it would have 
completely changed the dynamic, and it wouldn't have allowed the other tribe to to realize that that I was calling the shots, which I think put the target on my back when they did the show. So I just want to ask you kind of a question that's off, that's a little bit off topic. When you look sure. at your tribe with Kathy and with Chet and with Tracy and kind of with Jason and Eric, do you think it was pretty unbalanced against the favorites tribe? As, as far as them them being as, a, a, a stronger tribe than yeah, us? Yeah, being stronger, and it seems like almost mentally stronger, too. I, mentally, absolutely. Men, mm-hmm. Mentally, I think they were definitely, and that's part of kind of why I think they, they had an advantage. You know, they were, they were definitely more... Uh, um, more strategic. They were definitely uh, there to play and to play hard and to get rid of us. I think their mindset was no matter what, it's fans versus favorites. I don't care if they shuffle us. I don't care if they merge us. I don't care. It's fans versus favorites. Period. Mm-hmm. Story. For us, um, it, it, we didn't think that way. You know, they, I, my second mistake was when they did shuffle us that I didn't say hey, Eric, Tracy, Chet, no matter what happened in the past, it's got to be us against them. Mm -hmm. If one of them wants to come over to R4, great. If they don't, we have a tie vote, we fight it out. But I'm telling you, it's got to be us against them. That was my second mistake. My first mistake was not getting Tracy, just voting Tracy Mm -hmm. out. And my second was not immediately getting the four of us as fans together. Yeah, Um, because Tracy and Chet turned on you like that. They had no problem voting you out. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they had no problem jumping ship at all, which... Well, know, I mean, it led to their demise. Was, what's that? It led to their demise, voting you out. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was Chet like in real life? Is he Was he portrayed fairly? I... I, I think... I think he was. I mean, obviously, everybody that's out there, you got to. I'm sure you realize you're a, you're a big fan of the show, and I realize even more so now that everything you see is is more of a characterization. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, when you go to the fair and they draw that caricature of you, <laughs> you know, and you got the big head and they they amplify your ears and your teeth and your nose and everything. You're like, well, I didn't realize I looked like that. Well, you do, but some things are amplified. And uh, and that's kind of I think how I look at uh, the survivor aspect is you know, I can be really competitive and, and, and really abrasive and, and really and it's a little amplified maybe <laughs> um, and Chet is not you know he's he's not an, an athlete <laughs> he's mm-hmm. he's uh, he was out of his element as as much as any of us were and I think to some degree yeah I would say he was pretty accurately portrayed. Um, what they didn't show of him is is how he's he's a really super nice guy. He's a really really nice guy, and I believe that even though maybe he and Kathy especially had no business being out there um, physically, that that they were they I really didn't like the way they were treated um, by Jason and by Mikey. Uh, oh, so um, really, Jason and Mikey kind of bullied them a bit. Jason and Mike, you watch this season, and you see the two guys, Eddie and uh, what's the other guy? Reynolds. Yeah, you see Eddie and Reynolds. In my opinion, that's Jason and Mikey. Same kind of concept. We're cool. You're not. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, the, we're, the, um, we're the in crowd. You're the out crowd. And it's, I, I didn't like that. And, and as much as I don't like... Um, Shamar and how he's acting. At the same time, you're like, okay, does that does that mean that it's okay to to treat him the way and alienate him or alienate any of the other people? I mean, those guys really have this superiority complex, mm-hmm. and that was happening on our tribe immediately. So, you know, did Kathy and Chet did, were, were they going to play that game hard? No. Do do we treat them like crap because of it? I don't know. I don't yeah. think that's the right thing to do. You know, Jason one night went over and stole palm fronds off their shelter. Oh um, wow! That's, that's typical. That's typical. You know, high school, grade school bullying. Mm-hmm. You know, we need it. We're cool. You can't do anything about it. So I'm going to take it from you. 
And uh, I I told them, I said, that's horse that's horse crap, man. You don't do that. Yeah, you yeah. You go get your own palm frond. You go do your own job. You do your own work. You get your own shelter. Man. You, they built the shelter because you guys were treating them like crap, so they built their own shelter. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to go steal their good stuff because yours is crap? So you were very I, against I straight up told them, I said, I will tear down. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, so you were very much against how the camps were divided like that. It, you know, here's the thing. It, yes. Short answer, absolutely. I didn't. I didn't think that was good for for our tribe and our morale uh, as a tribe at all. For me, I had seen stuff in other seasons and situations that I did not want to put myself in. Uh, I'm I'm a, a happily committed, loyal husband, and did not want to put myself in any situation that could have even been conceived or portrayed or edited in any way, shape, or form. Uh, like something else was going on mm-hmm. out there. I see what you're saying. I slept. I slept on the boat. Mm-hmm. I didn't sleep with my tribe. So, um, the that whole thing, like I didn't like I said earlier. I didn't care about the shelters, but the fact that um, that that this group, you know, this cool kids group over here, the six, decided that those three didn't fit in. So we're going to alienate them. I, I just. I, I didn't like that, and if anything was going to drive me to stick up for them or to keep them around longer, it, it was that. I even told I even told the the producers I I can't remember if they showed this or not, but they said you know why would you vote out Mikey you know when he's fit isn't he physically stronger isn't he stronger as one person than the three of them are together mm-hmm. and I said on paper yes I said but I've been a coach. I've coached teams, I, I've coached wrestling, I've coached fighters, I've got, you know, and, and I will take three physically weaker people over one person who's causing a, a rift in the whole group any day of the week. Mm-hmm. I, I coached a, a high school wrestling and I had one kid, and I, I'll, I'll straight up, I'll admit, best kid on the team, mm-hmm. the most skilled on the entire team. And he was causing such a problem on that team, I had to kick him off. The way he was talking and treating the coaches, the way he was distracting all my other wrestlers and that, that had great potential but were getting distracted by his ridiculousness, I had to kick him off. And, and it's the same kind of concept is you're dividing this tribe. We could be united with three weak people mm-hmm. or, or we can do what you want to do and and be bullies, and th- th- I just I, I don't know, I went way further down this yeah. road than I wanted to, but that's just, I just that wasn't that's not my thing. Yeah, that's not who you are. You're not someone oh, to let bullying that, happening. What's that? You're not someone that would let bullying happen. I I, I I'm not, and I think if there was anything that was frustrated about my editor and about the interpretation of what I did is that I was perceived as a bully because I don't the, the only people I bully are bullies. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really actually one of my questions. Hot, you know. One yeah. of my questions was, what do you think of your edit? And it sounds to me like you didn't really like how you were portrayed. Here's the thing. I was just talking, you know, Leslie Neese from China. I was just talking to her the other day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I don't talk to a lot of people, but she's just a, a, a great woman. She's just released her new book, which I, I think is, is awesome, and, and people should get it. It's a great story. Um about her personal life and her journey, and, and I, I highly recommend it. Um, but uh, I was just talking to her the other day, and I said, you know, one of the things I realized is that my edit was more accurate than I ever wanted to admit. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm an abrasive guy. I've, always, I've been an abrasive guy. That's not who I want to be. I'm, I'm a control freak. That's not who I want to be. You know, I, I got a foul mouth. I like to order people around. And that's not who I want to be. So m- m- within the last year, I'd say for four years after my season, not my season, but I, I hate when I hear interviews and I hear people say that the season didn't revolve around <laughs> The season you were in. Um, but for four years after, after Micronesia, um, I was really, really bitter, I mean, incredibly bitter. So bitter I wanted nothing to do with anybody that had anything to do with Survivor. Mm-hmm. And and I was angry, and and I was uh, frustrated that nobody saw 
how great I thought I was. You know, I, I, this is what I told Leslie yesterday. I said, I legitimately went out there thinking that this was my opportunity to introduce the world to how awesome I am. Mm-hmm. That, that was my mindset. And I think that was probably accurately portrayed in my edit. And, and that, that wasn't who, wasn't who I realized I was at that time and isn't who I want to be, especially as a father. Mm-hmm. And, and seeing kind of, you know, children, only act the way that, that, you know, only act out the behaviors that are modeled for them. And, and when I started seeing my son do things, that I'm like, hey, man, that's not right. We don't talk about people like that. We don't treat people like that. Kind of then realizing, you know, him without saying it, but kind of putting myself in his shoes and going, we who, Dad, because you do, and I'm doing what you do because I want to be like you. Mm-hmm. And and then realizing, oh, crap, you know, this this okay. So this whole kind of light bulb, within this last year kind of went off for me. And uh, and I think now my perspective on my edit was more of the how what a what a harsh mirror that was for me. Mm-hmm. What a really, really tough pill to swallow that was, more than it was inaccurate. Well and it sounds to me that Survivor not only helped you with your love life, but it actually almost gave you a lot <laughs> of self reflection. It, it definitely I'll just say yes. Because uh, I don't know how much it helped me with my love life. It was definitely a conversation topic <laughs> when my wife and I were dating. Um, uh, you're I'm lucky. Sorry. You're lucky. When I try to talk to girls about Survivor, they're they're not really into it. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not as popular. Like, she was twenty at the time. I don't know how old are the girls that you're talking. To. Uh, they're twenty. I'm twenty one. You're twenty one. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Well, Why they're not, not into Survivor though. Yeah. You got to sit down with them and and force them to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, in in a in a, in a, in a <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, I like yeah. was... tie them up and strap yeah. them to the chair and make them watch it. No, in a, in a nice way, you yeah. know. I think it's a uh, you know you know you obviously know it's one of those it's one of those shows that's just ridiculously addictive. Mm-hmm. And, and once you get into it, get into it, it, and once you're playing the game in your own head, you just yeah. can't stop. Yes. Well, um, I don't know if you know this, but the uh, podcast you're doing right now is mainly for people that play online Survivor, and there's a huge community of us, the people that oh, play Survivor yeah. online. And I'm in an online game right now, and I think about it way more than I should. If you, we, I can tell you, I can honestly tell you, I don't believe that one single day has gone by since Micronesia that I haven't thought through some other strategic way, that I, whether it be something I should have done, something I would do differently, something something I would do if I ever got the chance to do it. I mean, it just, it it hooks itself in like a tapeworm, you know. <laughs> <but> <laughs> it just hooks itself in there, yeah. and it sticks, and it grows, and it festers, and you're like, ah. <laughs> but it's it's not, I mean, it's it's not like. It's not, a, it's, it's not a bad tapeworm. It's, 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 if you're going to do any drugs, I say do Survivor. <laughs> Actually, I like that a lot. I, I'm going to start quoting that, that I don't do drugs, I just do Survivor. There um, you go. There what did you think of Kathy quitting? It was inevitable. Mm-hmm. You know, I think yeah, I think it was inevitable. I, I get frustrated um, when I watch seasons and I see people quit because I think, I, I really believe that that's something that you can, you can see in somebody uh, throughout the interview process. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I don't like that. Obviously, Monday morning quarterback in the whole process is, is easy to do. I'm not in casting. I'm not in that process. I don't know one single thing about it. Those, they do a great job. Um, but I just, I have a hard time believing that that isn't something that you see in somebody's personality before they go out there. And what saddens me about it is it seems like it's a setup. I mean, I know how much Kathy wanted to go out there, but you know, somebody like Kathy, give her a trip behind the scenes. Let her let her come in and maybe try to be a a, a dream teamer, and and let her kind of get her experience that way. Huge fan of the show, she's a huge fan of the show. But I think if you asked her, even even she knew that it, it just wasn't going to work out for her. She wasn't going to last. She had, a, I'm sure, she had a great experience. I've never talked to her since, since Micronesia. Mm-hmm. I haven't talked to her at all, but I, I think she knew that it just wasn't physically anything that she was going to be able to last in. And to me, that seems like a setup for failure. 
you know, the whole even even going back to the whole fact of the way you know that that fans tribe, the way the I right tribe was divided by, you know, here's here's an older group of people that have families that have kids that have you know Chet has a has a son or a daughter I can't remember and you know uh, Kathy and her kids and Mary and or uh, I keep saying that Tracy <laughs> yeah. her marriage and and her kids you know um, and then and then me. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, you got six uh, uh, single, all, all variety ages. Mikey and I are the same age, and, mm-hmm. but, but you know you got you got single, you know, living life as as it comes at you kind of mentality. Uh, very little responsibility. Just hey, let's have a great time and enjoy this experience. That, those are two really con- contradicting mentalities mm-hmm. and thought processes and lives, and and. If I wasn't out there thinking on my toes, I would have been an early boot for sure. Well, I was an early boot, but mm-hmm. even earlier. And uh, um, anyways, my point being that it, I think, you know, the Chet and the Kathy and even the Tracy, those were like those were supposed to be the early obvious folks. Yes. And and I came in and threw a wrench in that whole thing. You kind of did. I mean, Mary and Mikey, Dean, if you look at the, your tribe just as particular, anyone who knows anything about Survivor would picture those two not being first, or, like not being the first or second Absolutely. to tell. Absolutely. Yeah, why, and why would they? Why, yeah. why, why would they be, um, you know, on paper? Yes. Uh, on paper, that they're, they're going the distance. You're probably going to hook them up together or you're going to hook, you're going to hook Mikey up with either Alexis or, or Mary. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably both of them, if if he's really good. Probably both of them, and that's going to be an, an an immediate, easy, early alliance of three. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a matter of who they want to bring in. Yeah. I was probably supposed to be brought in, you know. And this is just talking strategy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. So then you bring me in. Okay, I'm physically strong. You know, you keep me around as long as I'm, um, you know, going with the flow, doing what I'm told, and and helping out with all the you know heavy lifting. And when I when I'm when I've done my you know when I've done my my job then you cut me loose you know but uh, yeah that just wasn't that wasn't the way it went. Was it? <laughs> no, um, when you the day you got voted out, did you know it was going to be you? That's what we're doing. Yeah, I've been asked that a lot of times, and I can't definitively say yes. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you this, and I've talked to other people. There is just a weird kind of deal going on. And and all I can relate it to is the fact that obviously everybody's talking about it. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody gets pulled out and does their little interviews and does their little sidebars and talks to the camera and tells everyone what the strategy is and who they're voting for. And and that puts this whole kind of funk on the on the island. Mm-hmm. So did I know for sure? No. Was I was I pretty confident that it was gonna be me? Yeah, yeah, I was. I took everything with me, mm-hmm. and and I did to every tribal council because you're never sure. Yeah. But I took everything with me, and it was really funny because Ozzy kept trying to steal my water bottle. <laughs> he kept asking for a drink, and then he'd set it down next to him. And, you know, later on, uh, Amy had told me she was like, "Yeah, Ozzy was pissed that you took your water bottle with you because he was trying to. He wanted to keep that. You know, and he just so." It's just different little things. There's different little yeah. tells, you know, like very, very similar to poker. You know, there's yeah. different tells that people have that, you know, hey, this isn't how you treated me yesterday or this mm-hmm. isn't how I see you. And you. Just the way they're acting that you go, man, this is weird and shit, it's probably me, you yeah. know. So let's move ahead a little bit. You got voted off. What was yeah. Ponderosa like with Tracy and Mikey B and Mary? People who you had a hand in well, not Tracy, but with Mikey B and Mary. These you're now with these people in sequester with and when you just kind of led to them getting voted off. What was that like? You know, I'm I'm inherently um I would have you know, prior to learning things that I've learned in this last year, I would I would absolutely say that I was a loner. Mm-hmm. Um I'm I'm definitely an introvert. I recharge my battery by being alone mm-hmm. and um and i'm not a big crowd kind of person I, my social skills on uh you know in the uh you know like the dinner party kind of atmosphere are are, are not good mm-hmm. <laughs> so um when it comes to with that said when it comes to going in and being on ponderosa i i really 
didn't want to hang out with anybody. Mm-hmm. So, so you I were just kind of by yourself? You, well, I, I tried to be, but you can't really be, you know. And you all eat together. Uh, throughout the day, you can kind of do your own thing. I would, I would get up early and actually work out, and there was a hill there, and I'd run the hill, and I, I, I'd do some, um, you know, some body weight training exercises and stuff and try to get a workout in in the morning and try to kind of go throughout my day as normal as possible. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, the interaction was very high tension. Um, and and one of the guys who kind of helped with that was, uh, oddly enough, Johnny Fairplay. Because Johnny Fairplay's solution to everything was drink. <laughs> So, so I jumped on that boat and, uh, and just kind of kept the buzz going as much as I could so that nothing really bothered me and, uh, and kind of tried to deal with it that way as, as best I could. But, uh, you know, Tracy, her whole deal was the I told you so mm-hmm. aspect. Um, Mikey had a little bit of that too, but Mikey was still... He, he, I, I still don't know how to, you know, I've, I've talked to that guy only a couple times since. Um, you know, I don't live in L.A. I don't hang out. I don't go to all the social functions. i got a family to support. I, mm-hmm. I can't be, you know, running around the country to, to all the, all the you know, fundraisers and social functions that, that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to pick and choose what I really just genuinely and legitimately want to be a part of and, uh, and the rest of the time live you know, as normal yeah. a life as, as you can. And, uh, but I'm sorry to answer your question. Ponderosa had a lot of tension. In that. <laughs> Except for when it you were drinking with Johnny Fairplay. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't say with great pride, but yes. <laughs> it's okay. I interviewed um, Johnny Fairplay and it was a very interesting night. He, you know, he, he keeps things fun. He does. That's, he does. That's one guy that, uh, you know, if you're if you're in a mood where you want to kind of live on the edge and do some things maybe that you, that you haven't ever done before, and you know he takes you back to, and he kind of takes you back to that high school kind of mentality. Hey man, nothing matters. We can do whatever we yeah. want. We, we rule this world. <laughs> All right, let's do that for a few minutes and then get back to reality. Yeah. What was your best moment that we didn't get to see on screen? Oh man, that's a that's a really good question. Um, you know what? Actually, um, that football challenge that was unbelievably physical. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that one? We were out there in the water, and a lot of people got hurt from it. That's yeah, yeah. Peter got the thing in his knee, and that's and uh, and Jack got the the coral in his heel, and it was just ridiculously physical. Well. The goal, the original goal of that game, there were, what were there? There were three, four, five. There were five bags on the field. Yeah. And you had to get four in your end zone Mm -hmm. at at the same time. And that game went on, and I'm sure you've heard other people talk about this. That game literally went on for 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, wow. And nobody had four in their in their end zone. Mm-hmm. But they were out. What you didn't see was that for easily over a half an hour, they were out there fighting over two bags. Oh, wow. I was laying. You didn't see me in that challenge and in that edit a lot. Mm-hmm. Because I was in the back of our end zone holding three bags by myself. I do remember there was one quick shot during that challenge where it said, Joel is holding on to the bags, if I remember correctly, but it was only just and, a passing and moment. I believe at that time I, I, I saw that, that clip, and I think Prof said I had two bags. Mm-hmm. For the majority of the time, I had three bags. And my thought process in that challenge was I've got eight other people on my tribe to mm-hmm. go out and get one bag. <laughs> they should be able to do it. <laughs> I thought I believed in them. I believed in them. Maybe that was my maybe that was my fault. But I believed that eight other people could go out and focus on one bag and mm-hmm. get it. And I held three bags in the back of that in the in the water in the back of there, mm-hmm. um, in the back of our end zone for over thirty minutes easily. 
Ozzy jumped on my back and tried to choke me, and I told him, I straight up told him, I said, dude, you can do whatever you want. You try to choke me, and I will hurt you. <laughs> and he stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy put her finger in my butt, <laughs> and, and I said, you know what? I go, I really don't appreciate that, but I'm not letting go of these bags. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and Eliza jumped on me at one point, and and Amanda. So then they ended up they ended up getting right at the end. They ended up getting one bag away from me. Mm-hmm. So then I had two, and it was near the end. I had two bags, and they had three in their end zone. And they decided. And James had James had two of them, I think. Mm-hmm. Somebody else had one, and the whole rest of their tribe came after me and the two bags I had, and they only needed one. Uh, and they came over. James didn't come over. James, I never had contact with James uh, during that entire, during that, during that entire um, challenge, with the exception of, well, at one point, he ran at me, and I, I remember them, I remember them showing part of it. At one, at one, I had a bag or something. At one point, he came running at me, and and you would have thought that this was going to be this massive collision, mm-hmm. and he kind of just bounced off me. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, it was it was very unclimactic, yeah. anticlimactic at best. So it wasn't highlighted or anything. It was it, it was almost a collision that never happened. So, um, any that was the only contact I had with him. At the very end of the game, when that game ended, basically what happened was Jeff Probst stopped it at one point and said, look, this is going on for way too long. And it was raining off and on. And it was just horrible. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, if you all agree, we'll just do the first team to get four in their end zone. That team wins. Mm-hmm. We all agreed, and we started the game again. Um, and, and then, like I said, at, at one point, James had two bags. Somebody else on his tribe had one. Maybe it was poverty, I don't know. And they all came at me. And I remember Eliza picking at me and pulling my arms apart. I remember um, I remember at the very end, um, Amanda freed up one of the bags and pulled it out. And uh, while everybody else was pulling my arms apart, I had easily had six or seven people on me. And, uh, and, and I screamed out I, I, some profanity that, Hey, work on it. So, <laughs> and and it, and I was I was so pissed. And and Amanda took off. And I think Jason tried to go get her real quick. And she mm-hmm. ran into her end zone, and they won. Oh. Now, you can call that my best moment. You can call that my worst moment. I, I whatever, however it can be interpreted. But I sat there with three bags, believing that the eight other people on my tribe could go get one bag. And I was incredibly disappointed when we lost that that challenge. Would so, you play Survivor again if you were asked back? In a heartbeat. Has there been any phone calls or anything? No. no. Oh. Because you're one of the many people who, I don't know if you do this, but online there's tons of, like, fan fiction seasons. And you're brought uh-huh. back constantly as someone who gets, like, a second chance to play. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, I want to see you play again. I think your story... You know, you had an okay story, but especially now after talking to you, now that you've kind of, you know, you learned a lot, I think you could really do something amazing again. And I have well, one. You know, if it was up to me, mm-hmm. um, I've I've let it be known that I want to go back. I've let it be known as 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 much as I can without driving out there and and kicking in Lynn's door or or Jeff's door or Mark or whoever. <laughs> I, I, I've let it be clearly known as much as I can. But I, I don't know what that process is to get back on. I don't know what you have to do. I was incredibly surprised this year when I heard Jeff say how um, how Brandon Hans just he called us up. This is Jeff. This is a video I was watching of Jeff on on uh, the CBS website. Jeff said, "Yeah, he called us up. He said I've changed. Uh, I'm not hanging out with my with my uncle anymore, and uh, and I got a whole bunch of new tattoos. <laughs> and, and we thought we thought." great, this would be great, let's bring them back. And I'm thinking, that, that I actually said to my wife, I go, that's how easy it is. Huh? <laughs> that, well, because I got a whole bunch of new tattoos, yeah. and I don't hang out with my uncle, so, you know, bring me back. 
Um, if, okay, here's the thing, though. If you get brought back on the same season I'm in, I mean, you're much, much bigger than me and stronger than me. So, like, if you could just give me a moment where, like, I accidentally, like, tackled you or something, that would be really cool. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll work with it. We'll choreograph it. Chore- yeah, yeah, we'll choreograph, choreograph it. something. It all right. worked out. Okay. Um, hey, man, just if it makes you feel any better, I feel like I've aged 10 years since that season. I, I, I that would be that could be a whole another storyline. I've had hair fall out. Mm-hmm. I know I've lost probably thirty pounds, and I'm I, I'm an old. If they brought me back, I'm an old man. They, <laughs> they would really? be able to have. They would be able to put me out there and laugh at me. That's not to say that I wouldn't work hard. Yeah. But I just a couple weekends ago, my wife and I went and did one of these uh, um, Spartan relay races, like the mud runs, you know. Mm-hmm. And they drop the videos online from it. I'm normally in these races that, you know, based on your bid number, they take a picture of you, you get a still photo. I was mm-hmm. telling the guys I work with at the station, I go, I watched that video of me. How embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I look like a 90-year-old man running up the mud hill. Just like every bone in my body is aching. And where you think you look, you think you threw a move on somebody, and they have these guys standing there with pugil sticks. And you, I said, I thought I threw this cool move on the guy and shoot <laughs> him. I go, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's just totally embarrassing. I go, I'm an old man. How did I age that much in such a short period of time? This is the ultimate curveball question. Jimmy Tarantino had no idea what to do. It made Dr. Jill go, why would you think anything like that? So, are you ready? Okay. Can you do any celebrity impressions? I can. I can do. I got one. I got, well, actually, okay, I got two. Yeah, All right. I got two. One of them is uh, Rocky Balboa. All right, let's, let's hear it. Do a pretty good. You want, to, you want me to do that? Oh, yeah, Balboa? definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I just uh, went over to the ring, and I, uh, <laughs> you know, I was trying to throw the punches, but I just couldn't hit the guy. You know? I don't know what to do. So, and then, uh, and then the other one that I like to do every once in a while is, uh, have you seen the movie Sling Blade? No, I haven't. No? No. Oh, man, one of the greatest movies of all time. You've got to see Sling Blade. It's Billy Bob Thornton. He wrote the whole thing himself, created the character. I reckon I'm going to go get me some of them mustard and biscuits. Mm. <laughs> and they start the scene. The start of the movie is him in the, in, in the uh, not, not in jail. He's more like a like a mental hospital, he says. Mm-hmm. And the interview starts, he says, well, mm-hmm. I reckon the reason you're in here is you want to know why I'm in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's uh, switch tones here. Let's talk about sure. Reality Rally. How long have you been involved with it? I went uh, two years ago. Jillian, um, I, I, like you, you hadn't asked earlier how many, you know, if I, it, well, you, I think you had mentioned something to the effect that, first of all, I've never been called to go back, never mm-hmm. never been called to do anything related to Survivor. Um, the only other, there are two other um, charity events that I've gone to. One, I decided to go to because it was put on by Mackey, who was a firefighter in Louisville, Kentucky, and so I, I, I went to that one to help the, the, the Coast Air Charities and the Children's Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, and then I went, um, I went to Houston with uh, uh, where Jolanda Jones was doing her charity for SIDS. Is her, I believe it was her niece. Uh, I know it was her sister's uh, daughter had died of SIDS, mm-hmm. and that was uh, that was what their charity was for. And about Jolanda and I had gotten to know each other in Louisville, and um, and she called me up and invited me to that. And uh, we had also kind of been talking online about some other stuff with you know, things that were going on um, in, in issues that she was dealing with as a council person and just because I work for the city too and just, just kind of sharing information and stories and insights and things like that. So mm-hmm. those were two people. Those were two charities that I wanted to be a part of. And then, uh, and then the breast cancer deal. My, my mom had dealt with breast cancer. My mother-in-law had dealt with breast cancer. My aunt recently had uh, a double mastectomy. 
And so, you know, breast cancer is something that affects uh, all of us mm-hmm. in some way, mm-hmm. shape, or form, or at least somebody that we know and love and care about. So Jillian had uh, had asked me to come a couple years back, and, and I said, yeah, absolutely, it's close. Um, it, it's something that I can do. It's another it's another charity and and issue that I believe in and and support and care about. So, yeah, let's do it. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm not super comfortable in big social gatherings, mm-hmm. so I don't seek those things out because I just end up looking really awkward. <laughs> I, I do. I just I end up. I, a lot of times, I end up looking awkward. I end up really giving a bad impression. Mm-hmm. Um, People tend to think that I'm, I'm already perceived as unapproachable because of, you know, I'm a big guy, I have a low booming voice. Uh, when you do talk to me, I have a tendency to speak loudly and flail my arms, mm-hmm. and uh, and it just some people are it's it's scary. So, um, on top of that, but the fact that I'm really awkward in large social gatherings and have a tendency to kind of be more of a wallflower, the the perception is that I'm arrogant, conceited, think I'm better than other people, mm-hmm. and, and don't want to have anything to do with anyone. And that, that's not the case. I wish I was a social butterfly. Um, I, I have a lot of friends that are and, and see how they're, you know, they can work a room like nobody's business. And I think it's an incredible skill that that I just, simply do not have I'm I'm uh, it, it's it's you know again I was talking to Leslie the other day I said, I'm just it just makes me really uncomfortable social anxiety insecurity whatever you want to call it just makes me really uncomfortable I didn't uh, I didn't grow up in being socialized you know if that if that makes sense mm-hmm. other than school my parents weren't super social we didn't interact with a lot of other families and a lot of other kids and and go to parties and stuff like that that, that I remember so those skills weren't really developed. I'm trying to be conscious of, uh, of that and, and with my kids mm-hmm. because I don't want them to grow up being, you know, uncomfortable in large gatherings. I want them to be able to work that room and be able to win people over and remember people's names and, and look them in the eye and shake their hand and be genuine and give them a smile and, and, and you know, not shy away because, they think they're going to say something stupid, or they can't remember somebody's name, or what they talked about the last time they saw them, and that's that's how I feel most of the time. So, anyways, getting back to the whole point that uh, reality route. So, I went two years ago. I actually had a really good time. Thought that it, the whole event was just really well done. Um, the entire city of Temecula gets into it, uh, which I think has just been amazing for Jillian to even be able to create such an event of that magnitude. Uh, from her experience uh, of being on Survivor, I just think she's done an incredible mm-hmm. job. And I've told her time and time again, I wasn't able to make it last year. We had uh, a conflict with the uh, with the date um, here at home. Mm-hmm. But I told her, I said, anything I can do, anything I can do to help you with the promotion, anything I can do to help you with you know any of the uh, any of the extra parts that you know, I don't I don't really have. If I could sing, I'd sing for her. Uh, and and I, I will, even though I can't sing, I'll sing if she wants me to. You mm-hmm. know, if I could dance, I'd do that. A- anything that I can do to help her with what she's created, um, I'm more than willing to do because I just think that I, I think the time and the effort and and the energy and the, the detail that she's put into it is just uh, unbelievably incredible and absolutely deserves to be commended. And she's doing it all for Michelle's place, which is just a, a great resource out there in Temecula for for women who are fighting breast cancer. And uh, I just I, I can't say enough about it. And let's say I'm going to Yali Rally. What kind of events could I participate in as you know just a normal non-reality star? Sure. Well, if if you form a team. And I'm, I'm not 100% on the entire process of doing that, but you can either form a team and, and try to get one of the um, reality contestants on your team, or you can go and just say, hey, I want to participate, and I don't, I don't know if there's a fee for that or, or if you have to raise a certain amount of money, um, and then they'll pair you up. They'll not pair you up, but it's teams of four, I believe, mm-hmm. and they'll put you on a team with other people who, who are fans and 
a reality contestant, and, and you guys will go out and compete against the other teams. And you, you really run and drive and take trolleys and, and, and taxis and everything like an amazing race type <laughs> of uh, event all throughout the entire city. And there's challenges at each stop. Mm -hmm. um, you, there's there's uh, puzzles and uh, physical challenges and uh, r riddles and rhymes and you know things you have to figure out and hints and clues and all that stuff and you spend you know four or five hours or whatever racing through the entire city to Mecula and then each team comes in 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 the order that they finish and and it's a it's a competition mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot of fun because everybody's out there to have a good time <laughs> there's nothing that's you know it's 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 competitive but it's really you know low key um, good manner good nature yeah. competition that people are just there to have a great weekend. Um, and then after the competition, there's you know there's the the wine mixer or whatever she's got. They have a uh, they have a winery out there that that is just beautiful, and uh, everybody's invited to that. And that's where you kind of hang out. You can get to know these people, you know that that have been on these reality shows. You hang out and you get to talk to them a little bit more. That was actually as uncomfortable as it was. Ended up being really fun for me. I got to meet Terry Deeks. I got to meet um, Marty from mm. uh, what was it a couple seasons after Nicaragua. My, yeah, yeah, mm. Marty from Nicaragua. You know, just just some other guys that I look at and I go, they okay, that's I can, I feel like I can relate to them, um, in, in not only in the way that they played, but in the type of people they are outside the game too. Um, just just neat neat people. So it, yeah, I think anybody who who is even considering going should absolutely go. And anybody who hasn't considered going should absolutely consider it. It's uh, it's the best. Like I said, I've only been to these three, mm -hmm. but from what I see online and what I see other uh, people who have been on reality TV shows posting from other events, this, in my opinion, is got to be top when it comes to legitimacy, authenticity. Being for a cause, not being for a, a, a gathering or people getting together and partying, you know. There's there's that aspect in a in a really respectful manner mm -hmm. that that it's not just a hey let's all like Vegas for what let's all for example go to Vegas and get drunk and party together. No, this is for a positive cause mm -hmm. and it's done in a positive way. And and I would only choose to be part of something. That is, and I'm not saying me. Hey, look at me! I'm yeah. <laughs> I don't have the time. Yeah. I got three kids and a wife and a job. I don't have the time to waste. Going, you know, maybe when I was in high school, I did, but I, but I don't have that anymore. I'm almost 38 years old, and and my time is is spent with my kids and my family, and and working. So I'm not going to take time off work to go party with a bunch of people that I don't see once a year. Yeah. But I will. I'm off work, and I will raise money and raise funds to help somebody for a real positive cause. So let's say I can't make it down for some reason. Is there any other way that I could possibly help out? You know, the best thing. The best thing. Great question. I appreciate you asking. Okay. The best thing that you can do is go to the Reality Rally website and search around on there. Up at the top, there's some links. You can see all the people that are going, and all of us are trying to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, you can click on the name of, of any of the people who have played on any of the reality shows that are represented there. Um, Survivor and The Amazing Race are two of the big ones, but there's a lot of other ones like Big Brother and, and, and some other ones out there too. Uh, for some reason, a ton of people have come from Temecula to be on reality shows. <laughs> and a lot of, they have a lot of locals uh, that are there also that have been on different reality shows. So, um, but anyways, you can click on the link, click on the person's name, and it will take you to their active.com uh, fundraising website. And so I would encourage everybody that's listening to go to the Reality Rally website, find my name uh, when it come, when it where it says Reality folks that are that are coming to the event. Click on my name and and donate a um, hundred percent of the money that's donated through that active.com site to any of the people that you donated through goes to the Michelle's Place. 
mm-hmm. the way they pay for anybody uh, to go there that, that isn't paying their own way is all done through third-party vendors and, and third-party donations. The money that's raised doesn't go to paying to bring people in. The money they raise goes to Michelle's place. Well, that's a very good cause then, too. I mean, 100% of the money goes to the people that need it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If they can't, she, the way she, she and, and like I said, the, the way that she's organized this is just absolutely exceptional. You know, if you can go to a hotel or to the casino that has the hotel in it and say, hey, look, would you be willing to support this instead of giving money, can you open up some rooms for us to, to have some people stay in? Mm-hmm. And they donate that. That's a write-off for that, for that company, obviously. When then the people that are, you know, the money that, that I'm raising, the money that the other people are raising, isn't going to pay a bill at a hotel. The money that we're raising is going right to Michelle's place. And that's, she's done it the best way you can possibly. Thank you so much uh, for giving me some, giving me an hour of your time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Man. It's been it, really it fun. It's been a pleasure. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you had me on to kind of, you know, tell a little bit of my story and, uh, and also to help promote uh, Reality Rally.